The next part of the cloud is Cinder. Why do we need Cinder block storage? Well, that is because after spinning off an operating system from an image, you've got an operating system where persistent writes cannot be guaranteed. You will notice that you can write after spinning off an instance from a glance image. But the problem is, is that the write is local to the machine uh, that is currently hosting the instance. And if it's moved around, uh, the write will be gone. So the write cannot be guaranteed. And that is why you need uh, Cinder block storage. Cinder block storage provides block storage services for persistent storage. So that is exactly what is going to allow you as a cloud user to make writes in, inside an instance uh, that are going to be stored persistently. Uh, typically, a Cinder block storage is added to a virtual machine as a separate disk. So in a typical configuration, you will see dev VDA as a glance image disk and dev VDB as a Cinder-based block storage environment. Notice that dev VDA is what you will see if you are using KVM virtualization. If you are creating instances in OpenStack that are running on another type of hypervisor, you might as well see names like dev SDA and dev SDB. It all depends on your setup. Apart from the dev VDA and VDB, you can create as many uh, of those block devices as, as you want to. So all the disk devices uh, can be uh, shown as well. Often, Cinder uses an object store as its physical storage backend, and that totally makes sense. Because in a cloud environment, you don't know where your instances are, are going to be running. So if there is anything you do not want to happen, uh, is any local uh, storage of instances. You want the storage to be uh, written to an object store. Uh, so the storage of these virtual machine disk backend files is in the cloud as well, which makes it easy to move around those virtual machines. We'll discuss that later when talking in more detail about Cinder block storage.